I've wanted to foster for years um, and I'd always said that when, because my dad used to live with us at home and I always said when he was old and he passed away, um, it would be what we did with his rooms. Unfortunately he died um, really early. Fostering didn't cross my mind at the time because it wasn't something we were expecting to happen. A few years later um, we were watching lots of different TV programmes, especially a DIY SOS and I remember watching it one day and they were building units for kids leaving care. So these people were 18. They, this girl couldn't even boil an egg. She'd been in care most of her life. And I thought, what are these people doing? How can they have had this child in their care for such a long period of time, whether it be just with one carer or a variety of them? How have they not taught her how to look after herself? How to prepare for life as an adult? It really upset me, it annoyed me, and I thought I could do a better job. I look at my natural children and they can cook a bit for themselves. They can do the washing. They don't like to, but they can. And I, I just wanted to be able to give children that opportunity to have a successful life, to function as an, a capable adult, be able to look after themselves. Not because they have to, but because they want to. So I don't look at any of them and think, well, you're going to have to be on your own when you leave here. So Because they're never going to have to be on their own. Because I don't look at them any different to my own children. My, our door will always be open for them to come back and bring their washing. I will make them put it on themselves, but they can use my machine. I couldn't understand how these children had gone through the care system and, and couldn't function to be able to look after themselves at 18 years old. So I kind of chatted to my husband and we then found CFC and it went from there. It's difficult. Our first fosterling, as I call them, he was a baby. We had him from five days old. And when he left, he was 10 months old. That was really, really, really hard on all of us. He was a huge part of our family and the grief I felt at the time felt worse than losing my dad. However, it didn't last anywhere near as long and now I, we've got pictures of all of our fosters that have come through. Even if we've only had them for three weeks respite, they're still on the wall. And I look at them and, and I, I feel really happy. I know he's safe, I know he's happy and I know that we've done a really big, major part of that little man's life. And to know that all of my children have had a part of that is brilliant to know. There are challenges, obviously. He wasn't so much of a challenge because he was a baby and he was fun and they could cuddle him and play with him and do little bits. But now we've got an older one, there are different elements to that, but they all they all help. They all, there is something that all of them will do. Whether it's teaching another child how to have an argument and get over it, how to share your toys, how to console each other when you're upset and to see the difference in children that come into us that don't know how to empathise, don't know how to react to somebody else being upset, react to someone falling over and then to suddenly see them actually help one of them up or to cuddle them if they, they're upset, that, that gives me, well, it just makes me so happy, especially for my birth children knowing that they've done, they've done that, they've helped this child. Probably, honestly, I think they help children come along more than we do as adults. We're the adults, we're there to teach them right from wrong, whereas they show them by guiding them, I suppose, but not in a, not in a telling way. They just show them and they follow and I think they're invaluable, absolutely invaluable to helping the foster children feel more comfortable and progress quicker. I think just with adults they wouldn't get that experience as quickly. Seeing the progressions, seeing the good things, when you get a hug from nowhere or when they've, they come home and they're excited to tell you something that they've done, when they've never been proud of anything they've done before and suddenly they're beaming because they've got a result in a test or when they come in and they say that they've had a really good day whereas they don't normally have a good day. It's, it's the small, small subtle things that in a normal day-to-day -day family life you wouldn't 
necessarily pay that much attention to but when you've got a child in care that's come in and they're so low on their own self-esteem and then to see them light up at the fact that they've done something good and they can recognize that and that they're proud of themselves that is giving me goosebumps now that just that's better than any feeling you can get and you'll have all your slips and you'll have all the down bits you do it for those moments you get moments in months and months and months but those moments are everything everything to well, us and i think quite a lot of our carers feel the same well in fact i know they do because we chat about it <laughs> i think it's when you you've been doing so well and you can see the progress and then suddenly you have a major slip backwards and we don't understand why Sometimes we know why, sometimes it's because of contact or it's something's happened, but other times it can, it can just be they've woken up that day and they, they don't know what is wrong and we can't fix that. It makes you feel very helpless, useless, gives you all of the negative feelings that you are failing, you, you can't do it right. But that's where CFC step in, you ring your social worker, she gets you in touch with Christina, we have a really big support network and you speak to somebody and you talk and actually you realise that it's normal, it's natural, you're not doing anything wrong and once you've had that conversation you do feel a lot better. You just learn to ride, ride the waves. <laughs> I did a fair bit of research before I settled with CFC. Um, I went to a few different agencies and I didn't get a feeling that they had the same warmth and compassion for their foster carers. We need support and CFC's level of support was beyond anything I'd found before. We've got a really good team behind us. I never feel like we're on our own, whether it's talking to other foster carers. We're all quite a close little community, um, which is lovely and exactly what you need because um, it's a it's a difficult job and you need support and you need training and you need to know that people have got your back and I totally feel that and I have done since the first day that I contacted CFC. I always dealt with the same person. Now I just feel part of a team which is important. Definitely do it. If you've got the space in your life and your heart to take somebody else in, don't expect miracles. Don't expect them to come in and suddenly fit. It's hard work. There's a lot that goes into it and you're gonna have way more down days than you are good, but the good definitely outweigh the bad. And just to talk, be honest, talk to the other carers, talk to the professionals. I would say that talking to other carers is a massive way forward to helping you understand that you're not alone in it because it can feel very lonely sometimes, especially the last year. But now we're getting to see people again, it's, um, it's feeling a lot more positive. And I think if you've ever thought about it, look into it, choose CFC. <laughs> um, you want to find somewhere that you're going to feel supported, because the worst thing you can do is go somewhere that you don't feel that you've got the support. Whereas I've known since day one, there's any issue, there's always someone on the end of the phone. Always. And they're always willing to help and just make you feel better. Sometimes you just need to come in and have a vent, which we used to be able to do quite a lot. Um, obviously with COVID that's changed a little bit, but hopefully it'll all start getting a bit more normalised and we can have our meetings again and a bit more, uh, a bit more together again. <laughs>